Welcome to a special edition of Tennis Sucks, brought to you by Selkirk. <laughs> uh, we've kind of already decided to trade Travis, That's so right. to replace him, we got a pickleball Will here. Oh, What's wow. up? Yeah, no, put me in, Coach. Studio. <laughs> yeah, no, he wasn't performing well, you know, I was lined up on deck, you know. I told you, you should have put me in first before you got Travis, but... Now you know why. I told you. Huge upgrade. Huge, yeah. huge. <laughs> huge, huge upgrade. I mean, the extra reach that I have versus Travis is just unparalleled. Come on. <laughs> and speed. <laughs> That's right. Gosh, and better looking as well. <laughs> Look, as we know, we don't need a transition zone. So That's you don't right. even need that. Like, right. you don't even need resets or anything. Like, <laughs> nope. you, as long as you can get to the kitchen in one step, That's you're good. Travis's, That's Travis's, Travis's theory on that pickleball. Is Travis's what? theory. Just no transition zone. You, can, you exist. should be able to get from the baseline uh -huh. to the kitchen in one move. In one move. Oh, no easily. transition. Yo, there's no there's not defense, even a move. No I just start at the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? That's I like how it that. Goes. Actually, you know, I've seen a the couple players. Efficient. The Waters did that a couple times. They would experiment with um, the server at the baseline, obviously, right. and then their partner at the kitchen. Mm. And oh, basically, eye formation? Yes, eye formation. Mm. And basically, Anna Lee would just play singles on the return, yeah. and her mom's already at the kitchen. And they did that a couple times just to experiment with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I like there's, there's some stuff, okay. uh, you know, to try out right there. I think pickleball is just evolving, and there's yeah. a lot more experimentation, too, especially with people getting better and, like, you know, paddles, technology and whatnot, just improving yeah. vastly. So we're here at uh, the first MLP event. It just finished. Mm. Uh, I don't know that we're, you know, but we're here with <laughs> the... <laughs> our number one draft pick, the yes. eight overall draft pick, Jesse yes. Irvin, and the talent on our team, the, you know, probably the true talent captain, Jesse Irvin. <laughs> yes, so Thank awesome. you for Jesse. having me. Yeah, Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm course. so happy to be here. A goat. <laughs> No, I wouldn't say that. No, no, no. I'm nowhere. I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no. no. By no, the no. end of the season. Uh, that's the goal. That's the, the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hopefully, I'll be the MLP GOAT. But right yeah. now, I'm, I'm not All quite right, there yet. Stay humble. I like that. Yeah, I'm See? not quite there. The I'm, I'm a realist. I, I know where my lane is. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I don't know. You were first round pick, so. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. And I was actually, I was very surprised that I went that high. Because oh, there's so many, higher. there's so yeah. many great players out there and just so many upcoming players. So I'm happy that I got drafted that high. Um, so I'm grateful and appreciative, but I know how many good players there are out there. Wow, Jesse, you are much uh, more humble and nice than I had expected because I've been trying to like introduce myself to you at all these oh, tournaments no, I see you I'm at. I'm the worst. No, 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 no. You're just I'm intense. I'm not a people person. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. intense. And I'm focused and intense. It's the wrong time. That's and right. Like, that's not a good you're time going to do it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I gotta say, she's a, like a huge team player. Extremely nice. Like we're. We knew right from the draft when, when she was like on the phone with us. We're like, all right, this is the woman we want. <laughs> like she's all for I've the been team, working on the team player part. Which we love. <laughs> no, seriously. What? It's not it's not my strength. And I like I I told myself going into this MLP, I'm like, Jesse, you're gonna go over the top and try to be your like do your best to be the best team player you can for every single partner on your team. But you're and she has been. Yeah. I've been I've been i I've been trying really hard because it's like it's not natural for me. Like I played really? tennis, which is an individual True. sport. You know, even when you play pickleball, it's like there's only one other person that's mm -hmm. your partner. So it's it's a little bit smaller. Whereas this you're you have a, a team around you. So it's a lot more people that you have to consider like the emotions, the feelings, mm -hmm. you know the strengths, like all of that goes into consideration. So like I told myself going I was like Jesse, you're gonna, you know step it up and you're going to be a huge team player for this team. Wow, Will, props to you. She's like doing all this calculus in her head. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm a strategist. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a strategist. Okay. Major strategist. <laughs> I think I all the time. Every single move I make, I've I've thought about like 20 different variations okay, so of So that it. must mean you must have been <laughs> overthinking. Your brain must have hurt when you're thinking about how to, you know, include Travis into your team play because it must have been really tough to, you know. It, it's, a, it's a lot of thought. It took a lot of thought. But we got there. We got there. Look, here's the thing. Our team is unique. None of us have ever played with each other in a True. tournament, in a competition. We're all new partners in mm -hmm. every formation, women's doubles, men's mix. None of us have ever played together. So, you know, we were kind of just trying to figure that out as we were going through these matches. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's tough. But I think we did really well at coming together and kind of, you know, problem solving and figuring out the best way to get a great result. Dang. Yeah. So let's start with your tennis background. Okay. You just kind of mentioned there briefly. Tell us about your tennis. And I, I, I've heard something about you had a major injury in yeah, tennis. So and... I started playing tennis around the age of 10. And uh, I would say probably within a year or so of playing it, I realized I wanted to be a professional tennis player. Hmm. Um, went down to Florida to train at the academies, you know, did the whole thing, was ranked, you know, nationally top 10 as a junior travel, did all the national tournaments, all that stuff. Um, I would say probably around the age of 12, 13, 
my joints started hurting, which is when I went to the doctor. Mm. And then they kind of- joints though? Like all the joints? All of them. Really? Oh, wow. all of them. Oh my gosh. All at once or just slowly, slowly crept up on yeah, you? Yeah, it's just slowly. Like the major ones I would say was probably the shoulder. Okay. That was the one. And like shoulder and kind of like lower back and knees are the main ones that kind of, I feel the most. <laughs> Did you yeah, go to yeah. your grandparents like, oh, is this what it feels like to get old? Yeah. <laughs> <Is that laughs> <No>. what you- <laughs> well, funny enough, <laughs> it, it kind of gets to that point. Oh. <laughs> it does get there. <laughs> but um, so basically- Basically, I went to the doctor and they kind of did scans and then they realized that I just didn't have any cartilage. What? Wow. Yeah. No so, cartilage. Yeah. Like a, so, gen- a genetic so thing or just Right. From, oh, so really? basically, so what happened was I was born with a very little cartilage and I probably should never have played tennis. Wow. Like it was one of those things because tennis is a natural wear and tear on the body sure, kind sure. of sport. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem was I had very little. So the natural wear and tear that I did playing tennis, it just wore away oh, the rest I, of it. That's accelerated it. Yes. Than a norm, than a yeah, normal right. A normal. Um, and the doctor was like, yeah, if you had actually kind of like broken a bone as a child, they would have seen it when they did the x-rays. I never broke any. So I just never knew that this was actually a condition mm-hmm. that I had. So it just, it just happened that, you know. Yeah. I found out. And so what happened? What do you do? Like, how'd you get to this point? So at that point, basically what happened was the doctor told me, well, chances are you won't be able to play tennis for a very long time because it's just going to be painful. So essentially what ends up happening is without the cartilage is kind of bone on bone. Yeah. So your symptoms are very similar to someone that has arthritis, mm. which is when you said the old people, I kind of was like laughing. I'm like, yeah, it, 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 <laughs> that's I, how I, got, I felt. That's how I felt. <laughs> yes. So like the, you know, the, the bones rub and then they cause a lot of tension and then they get inflamed and then it's just constant pressure and just hurting and things like that. Um, what ended up making me stop playing tennis was when I would serve the motion would actually cause the nerves between the bones to pinch. What does that mean? Pitch? Like, it, like, in, like oh, when you, like pinch. when you pinch your nerve. Gotcha. I thought you said pitch and I no. was like, Oh, you about to sing? You about to <laughs> no, throw no, bass? No, no, what are you talking no, no, about? No, no. Like, <laughs> like, an impingement. like they, like an impingement when you pinch your nerve. Yeah. So the cartilage is good for two things. One, it's good for cushioning the bones, but it's also good to prevent the nerves and the tendons from slipping in between the bones, oh. which is why it, like pinched nerves happen. I see. Yeah. The bones, like the nerve gets caught and then it pinches as the bones move. Gosh, that sounds so painful. It's very painful. So what ends up happening, everything freezes up. So my shoulder would kind of just freeze up. You can't lift it, you can't move it. It just stops working. So you're just like dead? For- yeah. And it's no, there's nothing really you can do. Like I tried cortisone shots and it just, nothing really helps it. You just have to like kind of wait it out. And then eventually it, the inflammation goes down mm. and it gets better. The problem with playing tennis is that could take two, three weeks. And it's a random thing. I never knew when it was going to happen. It was just wow, part of my wow. service motion. Uh. So after like, you know, I would play tournament, especially like when I got to around like 18, like 17, 18, 19. And I started trying to Dang, play some young. of the professional tournaments, like I would just have to pull out because it would just happen in a second round and then I couldn't lift my arm up, I couldn't serve, I couldn't. And I think after having to go through that process a few times, I mentally just was like, I can't do this anymore. Like I have to just call it. Like. So how did that so, affect you mentally? Oh, it, it, it was bad. Oh. Like I would say when I had to actually quit tennis, um, I probably took two years off where I just didn't do anything. Like I, I kind of, you know, I did school, like college and stuff, but like I didn't physically do anything. Meaning I also gained some weight. That's, <laughs> my, <laughs> let's be real. I, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Um, so that was for like a couple of years. And then eventually I kind of mentally got back to a good place where I was like, okay, Jesse, it's time to like get back into things and just start fresh. So then I decided I'm from North Carolina. Mm. So at this point I decided to move to LA. Um, didn't know anybody, hadn't, not really, didn't really have any friends. Um, I knew a couple people in the tennis world. I knew the assistant coach at UCLA and he said he could get me a tennis job at one of the really high end country clubs, the Riviera country club working as a tennis coach. Mm. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll just go out there. I'm not going to play tennis, but I can coach and, you know, work with a junior program, stuff like that, and just kind of get a fresh start. And that's how I moved out to LA. Um, And then, yeah, I kind of just restarted and kind of got through all of that. And I actually loved coaching. I was working with kids and I found a huge passion in that. And uh, yeah, that was kind of my my tennis and kind of my injury 
story. And, and then you found pickleball and did you feel it in pickleball? Or? No. So it's, so I always feel it. It's always there. Cause again, I just don't have any cartilage. So there's always like, so for instance, I'm a big, I use CBD all the time. Honestly, when I play pickleball, if I don't use it, it hurts. Like I'm okay. like, when people question, does CBD actually work? I'm probably a person to go to. Like it does work. Like, especially wow. if you get the high end, like the real, like the mm. real CBD stuff. Like how are you ingesting it though? So I use the the tincture. So I'll put it under the uh, the tongue to ingest it. Okay. But then I also use lotion and cream on my, uh, especially the areas that are like the worst I see. pain, like the knees, the ankle, the lower back, and then the shoulders. <laughs> So okay. I, and I do that every time before I go and play. And oh, it's like the only needed. reason I can step on the court and play no at, a high, at a high level. Yes. Gotcha. So you're like, Absolutely. Hit, you're just like hit me like coach, hit me with it. Slap it like, ah, like, yes, ah. exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah. thinking CBD smoothie. CB oh, I do let's that get efficient. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> CBD no, smoothie. Like you can put it in, you can like, you can ingest it. You can put on like, you know, so like, but it definitely works and it allows me to play and, you know, do play pickleball. So I want to get in then to, we may as well get an MLP and let's all talk about it. But I, I don't know if you saw Jesse's like final performance. Oh. <laughs> she went stupid. I dummy. went out, I went out with a bang. bang. <laughs> did you see it at all? I did not. What did I miss? Tell me, recap it for me, please. Um, so our last match was mixed doubles. Yep. So it was myself and Colin playing against, um, Catherine and Julian. Mm. And Julian is a very feisty player, very fiery. Which he won MVP in this event, by the way, and they won the championship. There so you, go. There you get you an go. idea of, of what, how he was yeah, playing. He was yeah. playing pretty well. He was playing very well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he had gone through a couple points where he was feeling hot. And I decided, okay, Jesse, you need to step up mm. and, and, you know, get right back in his face. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> Some crazy, like, epic <laughs> yes. hand battle points yeah. that Jesse yeah. came out on top of yeah. and pulled it, like, you know, to 20 all. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, I'm sad I missed it. Did you, like, yell, Andy, I'm going back in his face? No, no, no. So I would never do that. <laughs> but I did yell back in his face multiple times. And then I got the crowd going. I'm lifting my ooh, arms ooh, up. Ooh. I'm running around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you I had got... to take a CBD patch after you lift your arm up real <laughs> fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a memes of pickleball of her doing yeah. Her yes. fist pump at the net <laughs> in Julian's face, like this is how you fist yes. pump. It, yes, it was it was incredible. No, like, it was. On a, here's the thing: like as intense as that match was, and as much as we were both kind of going back, it was like it was like here's the thing: I was actually having a lot of fun yeah. to the point where I think Julian and I both were like we didn't want either of our partners touching the ball. We just want, we both just wanted to go at each other. We're like, let's just play singles. Let's mm. just, you and me, we're at it. Like, let's go right and now. And your partners were okay with that? Colin was like, yeah, do you like- Yeah, like he, I was, I was <laughs> doing, he was, I was on fire. Like he was like, you do your thing. You're, you're doing great. <laughs> so like, you know, but like, here's the thing, like, especially for me personally, I'm extremely competitive on the court. I bring a lot of fire. I bring a lot of heat, um, but off the court, I'm, it's done. Mm. Once I step off the court, you oh, know. Oh, you cool down? Chill yes. Out. I, and then I, I want to okay. have a good time. So, like, I went up to Julian afterward. I gave him a hug. I'm like, hey, that was so much fun. He was like, oh, my God. Thank God. I thought you were going to hate me. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not. <laughs> I just, I wanted to just step up to your level. And I just wanted to make it exciting. And I just enjoyed the moment. So, like, I'm one of those where I can, like, at the end, and I can take a step back. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, it's, it's, I don't hold it personal. At all. You should have ran with it for just a little bit longer. No, no, <laughs> like, no, no, no. I hate you. No, absolutely right. not. So we lost in the semifinals. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this, Will, but uh, all week, a docuseries crew has been following us around. Yes, okay, I have seen so that. It's, I, the, the running name right now is Pickleballers. I don't know yeah. if that's what they're going to stick with. Ooh. Um, it's going to be either like an Amazon Prime or a Netflix. I, I like that name. I love though. it. So in the premiere, they're following the New York Hustlers yeah. who got second, second and then us who got third slash fourth. Yep. But after we got off, after that match, I mean, Jesse left it all on the court, like literally <laughs> yeah, emotionally did. just was like, like <laughs> letting it out. Yeah. Like she was that, it was that intense. And I mean, what more could you want from a player on your team than someone who it means that much yeah. to them? And it did. And we couldn't be more proud, you know, even though we didn't win. I just see big things for the rest of this season. And we're like, really, I'm really excited for Daytona because I, I was telling you, like, I feel like we're just, we we're probably three or four balls away from being yeah. in the finals, and right? Like them, that's what it comes down every to. Every match. Like in our women's, we had, you know, we had match points. Like in the guys, they came back and got it to Every single match we played, we were right there. Yeah. And in, for me personally, I'm like, I, I feel confident about that. Because again, like I said, 
we've never played together. Like mm. this is the first time all of us, like first event we've all played together. Speak so it's like, it's skills. only going to get better. Yeah. Like we're going to get more comfortable. We're going to know our strengths and our weaknesses. We're going to know how to work with each other. So the fact that we made it all the way to the semis, yeah. you know, not having that knowledge and now we know it's like it's just gonna get keep getting better yeah and of course. we've upgraded travis <laughs> <laughs> i was just like, about to say yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> but you know i'd say chemistry wise we were somewhere around maybe a six or a seven out, out of ten, 10. that's okay. my gut feeling from the outside looking in <laughs> right and i was just telling i'm telling travis and i think i talked to you about this is I think a little more time, more wins and more losses together, just more time together, yeah. mm -hmm. that changes yeah. because you have to trust the person. You have to see what they say. You can't just talk to each other about chemistry. Right. You have right. to like, you know, you have to, you have, you have to, to go do it. through it yes. together, whether it's a win or a loss. So then what does that mean then for the rest of the year? Like, aren't you guys like redrafting like mid year or how does this we work? We have two more events in this season. Right. But then, and then what happens? I mean, and obviously then, Travis is out. So what can I mean? <laughs> and then so. there's a second season and that's where whole kind new of, draft. Yes, whole, whole new, new draft. draft. But we're not thinking about that. Yeah, we, we got to win. We, we, we have more wins in these true, next two events. Yeah, true. two events left. But it's just kind of, I don't know. I just feel like it's too quick, like two more events, which is great, but I don't know, I would like to see at least three more events, three or four, where the teams stay, you know, the we're same. We're getting right. there. So that's I think a, it's going to get there eventually. Yeah. That's what we're playing for this year okay. is whoever ends up the top 12 teams in both Premier and Challenger, like as a whole for the season, yeah. those teams then play exclusively next year in Premier. I gotcha. But together as the same well, team the, with yeah, potential drafts? Potentially. Like Potent if you okay. draft, let's say the first draft happens, you know, in December of next year and we draft our four players and we love them, then all six or eight events for 2024 will be the same team. Right. Okay. And so we're, we're playing for that. And that means everything to us as a team owner, mm -hmm. you know, for them, it's I think winning and, you know, yeah. prize money yeah. and winning for your team. For us, it's playing premier next year because I, that's a valuation and an exposure that, right. you know, is a big difference between playing challenger all year yeah. and playing, you know, right. Premier right. League Premier. all year. Right. So. No, because I would, I would love that because I just feel like right now it's hard to get behind teams in general just because I know that it's the gonna draft, it's going to change and, and it's going to shuffle. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, right now, obviously, I root for Florida Smash uh, because obviously <laughs> I played for you guys. I was actually wearing my Florida Smash nice. minor league shirt as Thank I was you, coming Will. through, nice. even though I had to miss you all. But then uh, you didn't match. even see the match. Yeah, come on. No, oh. no. I wasn't in <laughs> the earlier spirit. matches. Oh. That's right. T-shirt. <laughs> Always there. Yep. In, in spirit. That's right. That's right. So that's why it's, uh, it's kind of tough. But also, I like it because, well, I mean, you know, Travis not on the team no more. But, you know, before he was a <laughs> he was a constant on the team. And I like Travis, yeah. you know. I'm sorry I took your spot, Travis. But, you know, it was <laughs> Don't just... Don't worry, he won't watch this. He doesn't even care about his own podcast. <laughs> okay, well, no That's worries. the kind of guy he is. That's the kind of team player we got going here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, that's good to know that you guys kind of have this, like, game it's plan. It's hopefully going to get there, yes. Okay. And the reason is, we've talked about this, you can't have... 24 teams right now mm -hmm. and the biggest reason we feel is the disparity between the one female in the world yes. and the 40 and the 48 yes. female in the world yeah. so that's never going to be a good look for whoever gets the 48th right. female right because we right? still want it to be fun like we mm -hmm. we all want to compete hard but yes because the level isn't quite there we don't have enough really good women like there's enough really good guys that it'll still stay competitive yeah but for the women it's hard mm -hmm. so that's why i had to break it up because it's yeah. not fair to the people who are drafting you know late late females yes. they really have very little chance or probability right. of winning so that's why we broke it up but next year our hopes are that field will be there okay you know and then there's 12 teams playing premier and it's just gonna get better and better and eventually you know you hope that you can get more Add and more teams, teams. Right. Yeah. okay yeah. that'd be so. great so well i mean speaking of you know the women's right now i yeah i, I do feel that there is not as much depth on the women's side right. as the men's side, do you see that changing very soon? Like how how much longer do you think until the disparity between skill gap for the number one 48 female? I think it's tougher changes? for women's. I think the reason why you see it on the men's side is because it's just, I think it's a different mentality. Mm. I think, and I've, I've had a lot of people ask me this just because yeah. I'm also a female. They're like, hey, <laughs> and you're one of the top females. Where, so where, where are you, the rest of you, like yeah. players that are like you. And I'm like, it's really tough. I'm a unique kind of person. And I think in general, for most female athletes, they peak at a younger age in general, okay. especially like for, and I would say with pickleball, the best transition to pickleball is tennis players. Of course. So if you think about female tennis players, they peak probably much younger in age. Okay. Like, look, 
in the nineties, you were having 14 year old women in the, in the yeah. finals of grand slams, Capriati right. And, right? Where you weren't really seeing that in men, you know, they're peaking at 19, 20. Yeah. So that's an extra and six now even years. More. Right. And yeah. that's an extra six years. So I think what ends up happening is the girls, they mature faster mentally. They peak, you know, they peak faster. So they're playing tennis at a younger age for a longer time period at that high level. I see. So then what ends up happening as they start getting into their twenties, mid twenties, thirties, I feel like almost mentally they're a little burnt out. Like they I don't, see. they don't really want to compete anymore. Like they might want to play and mm -hmm. they have fun playing pickleball. I don't know if they want to compete at that high of a level because they've just been doing it for such a long time. Mm. I think the other thing also is at a certain point, a lot of them want to start families. Like uh, it's a different, you know, for what, like, you know, having kids, sense. like it, it's a different, it is really hard. Like there's a few women out there like Lindsay Newman that does a really good job. She's, yeah. She has had a couple Making kids fudge. and then she comes back out and yeah. she's able to play at a high level. I'm just like, I mean, kudos to her I don't know how she does it but I think that would be really hard to be able to come back out after having kids like Simone same thing same they've thing. had kids come back out and there's a handful of them but it's really hard mm. shout out to that there were two women playing pregnant in yes. the yeah. event yes. on the same team on the, on the same, same team. team so the riddle was it's four on two tell us how that's possible <laughs> <laughs> That's what yeah, I'm trying to get no, everyone to go. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's really hard. So I think it's going to take a little bit longer for more female players to come onto the scene just because I think there's a little bit more of a dynamic with that. Mm. But hopefully we do get some. Like, I'm look, I'm probably one of the few. Like, I'm early 30s. I don't have any kids. I'm not married. Like, you know, I my... my my um, career got cut short, like yeah. playing competitively. So for me, this was like I was... I was yearning for something like this. I, I want to compete. And, you know, because there's no serve in pickleball, it was just the perfect, you know, situation where it's like, okay, I'm not in as much pain. It's not as hard on my body because I'm out there playing a, a smaller court. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, I was like, I wanted this. You know, I, I love competing. I got it caught, you know, taken away from me at a younger age. So for me, it's ideal. It's, I think it's harder for a lot of other women who have been competing, you know, all throughout, you know, their teens, early 20s, mid 20s to then come into this sport and think, oh, let's compete again. I think now they're like, let's take a break and just, Coast. you know, and, yeah, just enjoy life. We've competed because it's a lot of sacrifice as a young kid. You, you know, it's hard to like, oh, let's get right back into that <laughs> and then do it again. <laughs> so, Will, something I, I transition here I, I want to talk to you about is. You were at Columbus. Yes. So you saw Columbus. That was indoor. This yep. is outdoor. Just tell me, compare this to your Columbus experience with fans, with energy, with MLP as, as an event. <clears throat> I would definitely say that the energy for this one was much better. The product is improving immensely. Like the production, I think, is improving. However, I think uh, the court seems, not that it's necessarily a bad thing, it feels a little cramped to me at least compared to columbus columbus the energy was still great but i i felt that there was a little bit more room for the players to like really move around like you know go wide you can bring people out wide and you can still defend Got and whatnot okay. as a player yeah and that's then, important right exactly having that space, yeah. right having that space because you know i want to see I, I want these players to show case their athleticism yes you know on the court and then also with the camera crews and whatnot with all these camera crews running around this smaller court, it felt cramped and, you know, not as great for the you know fans, spectators and, and whatnot. If you see everybody kind of like running around, I feel like everybody was a little bit on top of each other. I think that was my only gripe. A very other interesting, uh, I guess, idea that I talked to Zane about in uh, one of our podcasts that we recorded was that he would like to see actually for the pros, the net to be widened just a little bit. Widened. Widened because... Less ATPs? Not not necessarily less ATP. I mean, like just like experiment not too wide, but just a little bit more to make the ATPs harder. But this also provides an opportunity for you to do shots where you can bring your opponents further out wider to showcase their athletic ability to open up lanes and see how they defend and recover etc. I mean, I love wow, ATPs. That's interesting. Right? So the court, the net gets wider, but not the court. No, not the court. The, the court dimensions, the only thing that changes is that the the, the net and the mm -hmm. posts move a little bit wider. Maybe like an inch or two, two inches, because then that really can bring people out wide. It opens up lanes so that you can attack the middle, you know? Oh, I see. Because right now, I think a lot of the pros, like, 
they, Myself. Yes. They, 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 ATP queen. ATP queen. I look for it. Well, it's I one mean, of my best shots. It's it is. One, it's, are, one of, it's one of my <laughs> only trick shots is my ATP. I, I, can't, really, I can't really earn E. You have the best ATP. I can't ATP. do between the legs, behind the back. I can't do any of that. I don't play singles. <laughs> don't take away my ATP. <laughs> no, no one's going to be taking the ATP. If you're still good at ATP, no one's going to be taking that away from you, I don't think. But like, I think, um, but you, I mean, ATP is not the only thing you have. that on one side so that... Jesse can still yeah, get her just, 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 just on the one side. <laughs> Let's keep my side. Only on the left side for the guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's see them yeah. run a bunch and yeah. recover a lot. Exactly. I mean, but on Jesse's yeah. side, you, ATP. You got the all net day. on the wheels. You see yeah. some, some of the people coming in, like pushing it. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's like, oh, wait, wait, just a little bit more. Yeah. There yeah. you go. There we go. Perfect. That's not a terrible idea, though. I've never it's thought not, of that. Yeah. It's something that's it's different. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, right, there's right, certain, you know. like, there's certain tournaments where they do have the net pose. Like, they like they didn't do the measurements correctly, mm -hmm. and they'll have the net pose further out. Mm -hmm. And I notice it instantly. Instantly. Sure. Instantly. I go for eight. I'm like, well, that's wider. Right. I would have made that. I mean, and, and you don't have to do it for every single event. I think there should be one event in the year. Maybe it's MLP. Maybe it's a PPA tournament that you experiment with right. that and see how it goes. Because then, you know, kind of like, um, uh, you know, in other sports, let, let's say tennis, like, you know, you have different surfaces yeah. and things. The environment is a little bit different. And to have that so that you change up, you know, uh, just the dynamics right. and the shot plays that you can do, it would really make things interesting because somebody might perform better with this or that or somebody moves better and it's like, oh, this is my favorite court. This is my favorite event because there's a little bit of, dif of a difference. I think it's brilliant because players are going to get more athletic. Yeah. As the money gets bigger, yeah. there's going to start being, you oh, know, yeah. LeBron James of pickleball yeah. that yeah. are like can jump 10 feet in the yeah. air and run, you know. Yeah, and look at these people getting like super long. Like they're like six, five, six, seven Honestly, plus. Honestly, what you're going to see is like, especially on the men's side, you're going to see like the men tennis professional players that are like in the 400s or 500s. Yeah. And they're going to start realizing how much money like top exactly. pickleball players are making. And it's more than Tennis the players that, that are at that level. It's yes. definitely more. Yeah. And they're going to be like, why am I out here playing tennis? And just when not I could having be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not making any money like the yeah. Like, and it's just, why am I not trying pickleball? I might as well at this yeah. point, like they've been trying tennis, you know, they've been on the tour for maybe four or five years and it's hard to get out of that 300, 200 yeah. range. And it's like, well, I talked to, it's funny. Cause I, two people, Travis, first off, he says he has more sponsors in pickleball as the number, whatever is 15 or 20 right. in the world. than he did as 57 in tennis. Really? In the wow. World. And I just talked with, if you know, Gigi Fernandez. Yeah. Of course. Like, yeah. Okay. I just talked with her and she can get, she has zero tennis sponsors right now and has like three or four major pickleball wow, sponsors. Nice. That's We're crazy. talking cool. about one of the yeah. most yeah, winningest yeah. female yeah. players of all time. Wow. Doesn't yeah. have a tennis sponsor, no, and but I think has it's because pickleball, pickleball is hot right now. That's it's so a good time a, to like, be good, in it. It's a good yeah. time to be Jesse. Yeah, yeah. it's a very good time. <laughs> it's a very good time. Yeah, but you got to keep, you know, all the riffraffs out. You know, you got to keep them down, down there. You're the gatekeeper. Like, no, you're not good enough. The say DP, that's right. You stay down. <laughs> you can go back to tennis. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Something else I wanted to mention was temperature. So it was an unexpected kind of cold snap here in yes. Mesa, Arizona mm -hmm. for this MLP. And we actually had a vote on which ball we were going to mm -hmm. use to all the players. I don't know if you knew this. We I asked did. them what I they heard. wanted to play. It was either the choices were Dura the whole time, Franklin the whole time, or Dura over, over 50, 50 degrees yeah. and Franklin under 50 degrees. Okay. And you chose Obviously, Franklin. Franklin won out. Yeah. We didn't choose that. We actually, I think, chose Dura. I think we did. Really? We were trying to be more of a speed team. I see. Um, I was wondering about that. We, yeah. Why yeah, chose? we chose Dura. But I was going to ask you, Jesse, like, what are some tips you have for playing in cold temperatures? Like, what is something my you do biggest, differently? My biggest tip is wearing layers. So I'm like the, I'm a layer person, meaning I have probably on right now four layers. You okay. can't tell I have on four layers. Just to stay warm? Yes. So I'll put on like long sleeves and then I'll put on like a thin jacket then I'll put on a thick jacket and then I'll wear like leggings and then two pants. So basically when I step out on the court, I don't feel cold. And then I start warming up and I'm actually almost in a sweat. And then I start taking the layers off. So I never get cold. Now, for me personally, I also do this because of my joints. Because once my joints get cold, it is just, it's Done. not good. Yeah, like, it. It's it. not Movement. good for yeah. like arthritic kind of sim symptom joints to yeah. be cold. Like yeah. it just hurts even more. Yeah, because so, movement is like, yes, yeah, movement is I always is have key. to stay warm. Right. There's nothing specific about your actual game that you change, just what you're wearing? Um, 
Game like, wise, the ball moves a little faster. Sure. So then what ends up happening, I tend to do less with my shot. So less swing, everything's a little less, more compact. Yeah. I will also be more aware of letting balls go. Because again, it's a harder, faster ball. The air, like the the old cold, the the air is cold, so things just move quick. Yeah. So balls will fly more. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually that's probably another strength of mine is being able to recognize out balls and not hitting them. The hardest skill in pickleball. <laughs> After learning how to keep track of score, is letting balls. Yeah. Out balls yeah. Go no, out. it's it's honestly it's a big strength because it's just easy points. Yeah. You and if Colin you are actually both out. really good at that. Yes. I feel like yes. there was a moment where you guys both yelled out, and Travis and I were like. And then <laughs> it went out. It went out by like this, and we're both like, "No fucking way!" <laughs> <laughs> How did they like, know? That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like it takes a while. Like it's something where it's not necessarily a guessing game, but mm -hmm. it's kind of like you're collecting data. Yeah. And it's a lot of data that you're collecting. One, you're collecting data on your opponent and how they swing, kind of like their swing pattern, the pace of the ball. Then it's kind of, okay, the height that the ball's coming in. Yeah. And, you know, and I would say what needs to happen is like a trial and error. You need to let a few go and see where they land. So sometimes you're going to look stupid. Sometimes the <laughs> ball will land in. And it's like, okay, you know, you just, you kind of, and then you're just collecting data for the future. But I it's see. like if you, and then because the problem is, I think what happens is people want to let it go as it's traveling through the air. And you really have to determine as the person's about to hit the ball based on what it looks like, where they are in the court. Wow. You have to determine as they're about to hit it that there's potential for this ball to go out. Don't touch it. I and, see. And I, I think what happens is people try to do it as the ball's coming to their paddle. And at that point, it's too late. Yeah. It's, it's hard to fast. get your paddle. Yes. Which is why the, the ball will hit the paddle because they're trying to then at that point move the paddle away. That's what and it's too, it's too late. It's too late. You have to Every determine. Time. Yes. You have to determine as the ball's coming <laughs> that this ball's going. Out. How do you practice that? So like I That's what I'm saying. It's a trial and error. You gotta just let them go and see where they land. I see. And then you're collecting data. Okay, that one landed six inches in. Yeah. Or this one landed, you know, two feet out. Like you just have to collect the data. And I would also say at a certain point, like for instance, drives is the first one you should work on. Mm -hmm. If someone's hitting third shot drives, okay? If they're at the baseline and they hit a third shot drive and the swing looks one way. Yep. And then you hit a shorter return and they're three feet inside the baseline and the swing looks the exact same. Hmm. and they swing just as hard. Ball physically can't stay in. Yeah. They're three feet closer. I see. And that's something that is so hard for people to just let go. Hmm. And it's like, well, just see what happens. See where the ball actually lands. I know there's one moment that Colin walked up to Georgia and we were playing some opponent. I think it was a female opponent that was hitting very flat. Yeah. I can't remember exactly who it was. Maybe you remember, but Colin came up and it was a great point. He said, don't lift your, maybe it was you yes. even, don't lift your hands yeah. because she was hitting a lot of out balls yeah. and the ball was flat. It had no, you know, it, it had no, no shape dip. to it. Mm. And he was basically telling her, if you feel the need to lift your hands, yeah. you mean it's like out. At, in the stroke. Yeah, no, yeah. Like so at, meaning like if you're in the ready line. position, okay. if you have to lift your paddle up uh, above your shoulder. That ball's out. Yes. And I so see. he was telling her, she's got a very flat ball, don't lift. Right. Just protect from here down. Right. I the see. second you feel yourself lifting, get out of the way instead. Yes. And uh, I think it helps. That helps also. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Well, then let me ask you this. So, you know, we're talking a lot about vision and mm -hmm. perception right now. So I want your take on this because as I'm trying to improve my own game, I've kind of developed a little framework of how, what I, what I kind of call like the hierarchies of, of pickleball or any racket sport for that okay. matter. So it goes like receive, like perceiving and receiving. That's like number one. And then, yeah, okay. 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 <laughs> um, receiving, perceiving is number one. Yeah. And then it goes positioning then shot selection, then execution. And like shot selection and execution can kind of flip flop depending on the scenario. But it's like, if you if you can't, let's let's pretend like I have the best, which I do, at least better than Travis's, <laughs> the best <laughs> forehand drive in the world, like okay. from the baseline and mid court, yeah. okay? But if I can't perceive and see a ball's pace or spin coming mm -hmm. at me, right? Then that forehand is not gonna do anything right. for me, right? All right, now let's say I can see it, okay? But I'm in the wrong position. At least they hit it to, yeah, yeah. you know, the right side of the court. I'm on the left side. It, it doesn't matter. Right. Like, it's useless. Right. And then let's say the ball drops into the kitchen and I choose the shot. The shot I chose is a drive. It's right. probably not right. right. But let's say all those three things then, like, are good to go. Then I have to be able to execute at a high level. Like, let's say nine times out of ten. Because then if I can't, then it means nothing. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So I agree with that one. You agree with that one? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious and about that. And again, is. I don't think people realize how much information there is on the court. Yeah. I think a lot of times people just see ball, hit ball. 
Yes. And then me. it's too it's too late. Okay. There's so much information being spread across the court. It's like chess. There's so much going on. Okay. The more perceptive you are of all of that information, okay. the more information you have, so the what, more you can problem solve and then figure out what you need to do next. Okay. So what piece of information are you looking at first? Or are you kind of prioritizing first when you get in a court before a match or during a match? Right. I'm sure it changes its dynamic based on who right, you're playing right. in the environment. But like, what are you trying to... Are you looking at the information of your stuff first, like your shots and your performance, or maybe your opponent's first, or maybe the court or the ball? I don't know. What is it? For me personally, it's strategic. Okay. So I usually come in with a game plan of, okay, what is the best way to beat the team across the net? Mm. What are their weaknesses? Okay. I There's a lot of players that like to play to their strengths, and that's not a bad thing, mm -hmm. right? At a certain point, depending on the level of the other person, it's playing to your strength. Look, I think that's the way Ben plays because he's so good. He just always plays to his strength. Mm. And then he's like, and he'll be stubborn about it. You know, he's like, <laughs> I'm going to play to my strength and I'm going to keep doing that until someone can prove that they can actually consistently beat my strength. I see. Right. So there is a certain point where it's like, okay, you do that. Uh, I personally like trying to play to my opponent's weaknesses. Interesting. And I think a lot of players, it's a balance of, well, how comfortable are you, are you doing that? Mm. A lot of players like to feel comfortable. They mm -hmm. like to do what they're comfortable with as compared to doing what the opponents are uncomfortable doing. Uh, I like to try to figure out what are my opponents uncomfortable doing and let me play that, even if it makes me uncomfortable. I would rather them also be uncomfortable. I see. So like, I kind of go at it with, okay, what are, what are my opponent's weaknesses? Figure that out, and that's the first game plan. And then usually, when I first started playing, my idea was, okay, Jesse, kind of get comfortable and good at doing everything, right? So be comfortable playing the right side, be comfortable playing the, the left side, be comfortable like dinking, be comfortable like, be comfortable doing everything so that you can mold and kind of be a chameleon so that you can adjust and do everything based on what the opponent. By the way, she played both sides this weekend yeah. to get us the semis, so <laughs> she proved yeah, that she has it all. I, yeah. I like playing both sides. Yeah. I, I, I have You're a, a very really good forehand dink, I have a very good backhand dink. Like, for me, I have a, a great forehand out of the air, I have a great one hand backhand out of the air. Like, it, Flicks, for me, it doesn't it matter. All. So what's the number one thing you're working on for 2023 then? Do you have like one I told, like for thing? me, yeah, it was being a really, really good team player. That was my biggest, I'm <laughs> wow, telling you, that was my biggest wow. goal. That was ultimately my biggest goal coming into this MLP was just being a really good team player. Um, because again, that's something I've always struggled with because I came from tennis, which is an independent sport. Mm. So it's, and even in my personal life, I'm a very kind of independent, solitary person. You know, I don't need a lot of people around me. I'm not like a very social, I can be social, but I'm not a very outgoingly social person. Ah. So it's like, I'm very comfortable being by myself. I'm not extremely emotional. I'm meaning like, I don't get the highs and lows. Like I, I like being very neutral. Yes. So it's like being aware of all of that and kind of like accepting that other people do have emotions. Cause I'm one of those people where, you know, if you, if you break up with, if you have a relationship and you break up, I'm like, it's over. Like just move, <laughs> find somebody else. Like, it would, like there's no, like I'm, I'm the type of person where it's like, does it help? Right? Like, yeah. like does getting upset or angry, will it help whatever you're angry about? If it doesn't help, don't do it. You're just wasting energy. Practical. Yeah. Right. Practical. Uh, it's very logical. My yeah. dad, my dad's a very logical person. Logical. He raised me that way. It was like, don't get upset. Like if it doesn't help, don't do it. Like don't look for a shoulder to cry on. Yeah, just, Jesse. I'm not, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so really not. But I understood going into this event. It's like, Jesse, just because you're not that way doesn't mean other people, you know, like other people are emotional. They have feeling like you have to do better at being a team player and just uh, finding ways to connect with your teammates. Okay. So what you're telling me now is that you went to Travis and said, okay, you can cry on my shoulder, Travis. It's okay. I didn't he say is that. the crier on the team, uh, he actually. Is, <laughs> <laughs> is he really? He yes. Is, he is, Wait till the docu series comes out. He's very sensitive. <laughs> which look, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Like it's not. He's like a passionate I, person. Yeah, I feel it's like. passionate. You I know? say he's emotionally unstable, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll call him passionate. <laughs> <laughs> he's unhinged sometimes. Like, like, Self-admitted. Yeah. No. Like he felt really bad. Like if he wasn't playing well, I'm like, look, it's okay. Like you know what? At the end of the day, he hasn't been playing as long as these other guys that yeah. are on, like that. You know, or in the like the on the MLP so it's like you know he's very hard on himself and I'm like look it's okay like it's all good it's not you know it's all good on that note is there <laughs> anything good you can say about having Travis as a teammate no comes. I love his energy yeah yeah I love the fire like it's feisty and I like it like some it makes people me love it some hate it <sighs> no we need it 
No, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, I think like when I see it, it kind of gives me, it makes me feel like I have permission to do the same. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like, okay, no matter what I do, Travis will still be like, one, he'll still one up me, so I won't right. be as bad, right? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't like, like even today, like as I was like getting in Julian's face and like screaming, I'm like, oh no, Jesse, this is just, this is way too much. Like you're way over the top right now. Like, <laughs> but it's because it's just out of my like comfort zone. Like I've never, I'm telling you, if you go back and look at this match, yeah, I've never done any of this before. It's a good look. I, I've never, <laughs> never, never. Like, this is the loaded. first she, time. Oh, I can't wait like, to see Like, I will do now. the commands, but I've never, like, been, like, that over the top. Ooh, so yeah. it was, like, I, like, afterwards, I was like, oh, boy, that was a lot. Well, I'm curious. <laughs> Even for me. you guys now for the match <laughs> But it was this fun. Year. Yeah. I, mean, I, I it, think, it, now I'm like, oh, oh you know, that was, one? I felt, like, felt good. I was like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm, this might be a, this might be a. <laughs> the new Jesse. Yeah. Jesse. Yeah. Oh, we might have snap. unlocked something here. I might be. You haven't even seen my final I know, form. <laughs> I know. I might be doing it way more now. Finals in I Daytona. I really liked it. <laughs> the buns come off like, oh, I'm ready now. <laughs> I really liked That's it, yeah. the next level. Yeah. Up, you know, the evolution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, so I'm curious since you guys uh, was watching a lot of this and people like, what did you feel about the energy between the players? I I've heard mixed things about, uh, you know, people, the bravado, I guess. There was much more bravado this time around, you know? Yes. And I would say that's because there's more, you have more characters. Yeah. And the, look, the caliber is higher. The level is higher. You know, the players that you have now are so used to being the best mm. in the world. And they're playing against each other. So, yes, there is going to be a little bit more tension because they're all used to winning. And in this MLP rally scoring format, you don't actually know who's going to win. When usually with the tournaments, the best always kind of still win. Yeah. And that's what they're accustomed to doing. The best still win because <laughs> with regular pickleball scoring, that's just the way it works out. With rally scoring, you have no idea. So what ends up happening is the best don't always win and they're not used to losing. Hmm. <laughs> And, you know, I think MLP encourages a little bit. Yeah. They want it because we're, we're after to be the best content provider in pickleball. And how are you going to do that? That bravado, whether you like it or dislike it, is good content. It's entertaining. Disliking it is almost, you know. Probably better. Better for yeah. us. You know, yeah. it's yeah, like that old saying, like, if you hate us, you're going to watch us more. You know? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, there's so many people that came up to me after. They're like, Jesse, that was so amazing. We just loved it. It was so great. And I think it was because it was like me against a guy. Like, I think they like the idea of this guy was like, you know, he's, Julian's always high energy. He's always in your face. Da, da, he's, he's a bully. And, he plays bully ball. No, but it's not. <laughs> That's bully ball. Okay, first when of you... all, I don't think it's bullying because it's like you're a professional athlete. If you That's can't right. handle someone yelling at you, you don't need to be playing professional That's sports. That's how a fan sees like, it. Like, yeah, the, like, know, no, like, it's not, it's not pushing bullying. people around no, on the court. No, then you should not be playing professional <laughs> sports. It, <laughs> if you get upset about that, you should not be a professional player. I don't know if anybody's like, going to that's, that's, like, that's just the term that they use, but it's all good. You shut them down. But Jesse, Jesse beat up the bully. No, right. it was, it was like, for, that's, again, I wouldn't, I was just, for me, it was more like, okay, Jesse, just step up and like, take, take them on. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, I like, I think a lot of fans like the idea of, okay, here's this player. He's really feisty. He's really fiery, but here's this girl that just comes out of nowhere and is like, oh, I'm going to do it too. And I'll like, I'm in, I'm ready for this. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's go at it. That's and right. I, for, Piss it was, off, Julian. It was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So I enjoyed it. So, yeah. And I think, you know, that dynamic is great for the sport. It's great for the fans and it's entertaining. And yeah, I think, I think that's what people look for. As a player, would you want the fans to get rowdy, like as you're in the rally? No. No? Okay. And the only reason why I say that is because I'm, I'm a player that uses all the elements, meaning I, I'm looking I'm also listening to the sound of the ball. Oh. So the, like the sound that comes off the paddle, the way it sounds gives me information. So if I can't hear it, it's hard. Like for instance, I've played indoor pickleball yeah. and it gets really frustrating because the echoing of the noise makes it sound louder than it actually is. Mm. So for instance, if you were to hit a shot and, and you're indoors and it echoes yeah. and it just, it sounds loud, I'm getting ready for something that's coming hard and then it might not actually be as hard as it sounds. So then it throws off the timing. So for me personally, I, I like, I don't mind 
get as loud as you want after, kind of like tennis, get as loud after the point. But like in the middle of the point, I actually use the sound of the ball coming off the paddle to give me information. Mm. This is why the vice is so dangerous, that vice paddle. Yeah, I've I'm played like, with it. Because it's silent and oh, it hits really hard. Really hard. So really? you tag people left and right. Wow. Because they don't hear anything. You don't hear it, yeah. And so you'll see it hit their chest yeah. and then they swing and it happens <laughs> over and over and over again. You're like, I love this thing. Yes. <laughs> people getting pegged. Wow. All right. Well, I know we got to wrap up. You have dinner and people waiting here. Uh, I Travis just texted me a question. He wants to know. Uh, oh, so how- he's watching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is live. He wants to know. Oh, he wants to know goodness. how do you get an alcohol sponsorship? That was his only question. <laughs> Uh, so first you have to start Busy. by drinking. Yes. So I am recently <laughs> sponsored by Vizzy Hard Seltzer and they came up to me because they found out that I, uh, drink a little bit while I play, you know, just to calm yes, the nerves. Sir, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it made me play better. It, like I was, I was ready to go. Like it just, it, it just gives me this fire inside of me <laughs> that makes me play better. She loses a rally. You have a shot ready for her. <laughs> oh, every time, every time I go to a timeout, every time I go to a timeout. We don't have to worry about bottle. it. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, what are you? So and now she's got yeah. these she's got these <laughs> the circle, circle bottles that so flavor good. it for her. Oh my gosh. It makes so it's much so sense good. now. I, so I'm, now I can put like the Vizzy in my circle bottle and then I get like flavors. Oh my gosh. It makes so much sense because I, I, I swear I've seen like somebody toss you like a water bottle like after a game and some other tournament and you're like, nah, nah, I'm no, 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 not that one. No, no, no yeah, not yeah. that one. Oh, yeah, no, that now one. I know. No. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. So, so for Travis, if he wants one, you have to like start like drinking a little bit while you're playing so that people are like, oh, this helps. Uh, we need to get that guy on a sponsorship. People know. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, there perfect. You go. What if it doesn't help him? What if he just plays worse? Uh, well, That's, then it's not for you. <laughs> no <laughs> or, you gotta build, or you got to build your tolerance, one of the two. <laughs> All right, Ro, anything really quick before we close out here? Producer Ro? No, I'm good. Thank you, Jesse. Oh, yeah. You're, You're welcome. Awesome. Will. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, man. Heck yeah. yeah. It's good to have Thanks yeah. for stepping Seriously, in. Seriously, appreciate it. For sure. Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'd love to be on all the pods. I think this is probably one of the first pickleball podcast i've ever done oh really well, I've, I've, usually, I've, I've usually tried to like shy away from it because i don't like you know again no i'm not a very social person i like you know i like behind the scene i see well you know, keeping people to myself. want to hear about you but, yeah, i think this is like probably one of the first ones i've ever Heck done yeah well i'm gonna convince you to try to come on my pod eventually okay somewhere. and i yeah. might tell you yeah let's let's let's, let's try and then not. like no, two will... weeks later i'll be like yeah, yeah. It sounds great let's, <laughs> let's do that it. i won't take and it then personally a month later, yeah let's Sure, no problem. <laughs> That's usually my response. All good, all Always good. Shout out to Selkirk. Thank you so much, Jesse. I'm yeah, looking forward course. to Daytona. Will, yeah. Hey, check out the Pickle Studio, Pickleball Studio. Yeah, Pickleball Studio podcast. You can follow Chris also in the Pickleball Studio YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel called uh, Pickleball Will. Man, love to be on the, the Tennis Sucks podcast. Always a great time. Yeah, I, I mean, it's the best. Check him out. He really is. We're, we're going to catch him, but for right now, I'll give him the, the king, king of pods. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.